Hello YouTube, Mark Imbao here. Welcome to my channel. In this video, I'm gonna share with you why I lost my cello and how I found it after 7 days. And I took off its housing cover to clean and dry it up. You won't believe what I found inside it. Yeah, there were like successive rains all throughout the week. A missing drone should probably be wet under weather condition. So this video has the proof about how cello is resilient to water. Flying a drone is fun and a rewarding hobby. When I got my first drone, Cello, about 3 months ago, I pretty much fell in love with it. I enjoyed playing with it, taking a selfie with my family, with my colleagues. I took footages to any place I like and it's been a lot of fun. Two months later, I tried flying my drone at night time and bad thing happened. My drone flew away and lost for 7 days. November 29, 2020, around 7 p.m. The moon was shining so bright and I thought it would be nice to fly a drone at night. Yeah, I was kinda bored at the time so I grabbed my cello and went outside right in front of the house with my son. I inserted my Wi-Fi extender to a power bank and with a fully charged battery I switched on the drone. Started the screen recording and opened the app. And immediately I got a yellow notification on my screen. Ambient light is too weak. Fly with caution. It was actually my first time to fly at night. So with a little bit of excitement, I set the bitrate from open to 4 Mbps. I started to record a video and tap the takeoff button to fly. As you can see on the screen, it does not hold its position. When the drone was already up in the air, another real warning popped out. Vision positioning is unavailable. Land as soon as possible. But I wasn't lucky enough to notice it because my eyes were focusing to the aircraft, which started to spin up in the air and fly erratically. Landing. At low altitude level, my son and I can barely see it because of the trees and shadows. All in silly weeks, I made a stupid decision. I throttled up, thinking that at higher altitude, we could see it through the moonlight and land properly before anyone gets hurt until it reached to 10 meters and that was my first mistake. And I just realized that it's too late. I'm about to lose my drone. But I tried to stay calm. My son shouted, there it is, near the trees, fly up higher. So I keep on pushing the left button upward but it's useless and looking back to my screen the drone was already initializing auto landing and we can't see anything we can hear the sound of the propellers but we can't see it anymore I looked up to my screen it reached 2 meters and unconsciously I was still pushing the left controller upward landing until the monitor of my phone got stuck up and we lost control to tell we had no idea where it landed. We tried to search everywhere in the area. Some of our neighbors helped us when they noticed that we were looking for something. They turned their flashlights on, sounding climb up the trees, up on the roof, the house nearby, but we found nothing. I can't believe it's gone that quickly. The following day it was raining and I was so worried about my drone, so early in the morning I went back to the place with my wife and my son continue searching. Since Tello has no GPS, it's really impossible to locate it when it flies away. We've talked to some of our neighbors if they noticed or found something. We've searched around the area yet we failed to find it. We decided to make a poster and put it on the social media. We also printed some copies of it and distributed it to the neighborhood so they can have an idea about how it looks like. On the fifth day of searching, I decided to transfer the screen recorded video to the computer. Using a video editing software, I tried to adjust its brightness and contrast. And this time, it gave me the clues like landmarks and the direction where it flew away. So the following day, after the rain was out, I went into the school's backyard because I thought it's where it landed. 
as I predicted based on the screen recorded video. There was a vacant lot just right next to that school and my wife and I went there with our kids and as I look around the area I noticed something like glowing white among the green grass and plants. So I went near and to my surprise Taylor was just right there resting perfectly to the ground. So I rushed back to my wife, asked for her cell phone and started filming a video. I was really happy that day. I finally found my Taylor. Back to our house, I immediately removed the battery without touching the switch button. I removed the prop guards and as I carefully took off its top shell, I noticed something unusual inside the drone. Just long and it's still alive and kicking. The following day, I bought a small screwdriver to open the bottom cover of the drone. I carefully removed some dust with a paintbrush and used a blower to dry it out. I put an ink smart to the battery because I had no idea I could use it again. We made sure that the entire part of the aircraft is totally dry before putting those shells back to their proper places. After that, I inserted another battery to the room and switched it on for the first time. And yeah, I was glad you woke up. This time, I should perform the IMU calibration and see if it can fly again. There she goes. My tiny little drone is back again and she's still alive. And live happily ever after. Now that I have this drone back, there are five things that I should never do again with my title. Number one, I should never fly my drone near a cellular network tower. I even mentioned this in the poster that we've shared. That cell tower is only about 15 meters away from my child's home point. I think this is the main cause of losing control to the drone. I really had no idea about signal interference since I started this kind of habit two months ago. Number two, I should never fly my drone when it's windy. I've almost lost my child once because of strong wind. You know, wind is really unpredictable even if you have an app like UAV forecast, drone assist, etc. Experts say that upper wind is faster than the wind below altitude. That night, I thought that the wind was calm, but upon reaching 10 to 12 meters high, my drone was blown away. It was actually the second time that I almost lost my cello because of strong wind. Number three, I should never fly my drone at night time again, especially when it is not equipped with anti-collision lighting. Also, current FAA regulations do not permit small drones to fly at night without a waiver. Here in Philippines, drone flights at night time are not allowed by the CAAP. I just learned it recently. Number four, I should never fly my cello at night. Number five, I should never fly my cello at night time again. I want to thank all the people who helped us find my cello. G. 
Jimar, Sajal, Habi, neighbors and friends, especially those who shared the poster on social media. Thank you guys. If you like this video, please give a thumbs up. If you don't like it, you can click the thumbs down button twice. And if you're new to my channel, please hit the subscribe button and the notification bell icon to get new video updates. See you on the next video. Thanks for watching.